Newton's first law, right here. Unbalanced force. And what do forces cause? Do forces, do you need a force to cause motion? Maybe in the history, right? But when an object is in motion, the forces could be balanced. Do you agree to that? Right. So if it says if, if an object is moving with constant velocity, what does that mean for the forces? Balanced, right. And if the forces are unbalanced, what's happening? Speeding up or slowing down, in other words, it's accelerating. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the unbalanced force. In the statement of Newton's first law, the unbalanced force refers to that force that does not completely cancel. or balance from the other individual forces. Okay, so get this down and we're going to draw a couple diagrams. Say that again. No, still first law. We're just reviewing. And we're going to finish off the balanced forces notes. Basically, uh, get our heads back in the game and then we'll move forward to the second law. The unbalanced force refers to that force that does not completely balance by the other individual forces. So I'm going to draw you three free body diagrams. And remember, all you need to draw is a box. You don't actually have to draw the object like if it's a car or something. So just draw a box. And we had some practice with this yesterday. So we'll draw three diagrams, okay? So as you're copying, you're going to look at these three diagrams. And you're going to tell me what happens. So give people a minute to get the notes down and then think about what is going to happen in each situation. Good. In the first diagram, someone said tension is larger than force due to gravity. So this might be an example of like an elevator moving which direction? Up. Is it moving up at a constant velocity or is it accelerating? Because the forces are unbalanced. Good. Second one, forces are, okay, so the object's moving downward. Is it going to be in constant velocity or accelerating? Accelerating. And we know it's going to moving down because the vector pointing down is larger, right? So we draw the arrows, one's larger than the other, if they're unbalanced, right? It doesn't have to be perfect, but you should give the, the person looking at it should be able to tell quite clearly. Third situation, what's happening there? This one's a little bit more challenging. <coughs> okay, so these are both 50. So first of all, what does the N stand for? Normal, which means, hold on, nor normal means per to the surface. Good, perpendicular to the surface. And the force of gravity and the normal force are balanced. Good. So is this thing accelerating up or down? No. Okay, what's the F with a little f? Force of friction. Okay, so forces of friction are always going to be, in for us, is going to be opposing the motion. So which way is this object in motion? To the right, but it's accelerating left. So what happens when you're moving right but accelerating left? Slowing down. Good, you guys. Ooh. All right. So for each example here, uh, unbalanced force in each situation, there is a net force acting upon the object. So this is what we're going to talk about right now, the net force. Okay, so the net force 
is the vector sum. And we talked about this in the first unit. Remember that? V adding vectors. And right now this is only one dimension, right? So if I was to add for the first situation, if I was to add these vectors, I would go 1,200 plus negative 800. Do you agree? And you would have a net force of 400 newtons up. Right? Vectors have both magnitude and direction. So help me out with the second one. I would do 600 plus negative 800, and I'd end up with negative 200, which just means we're going 200 newtons down for a force vector. Cool? Yeah. What happens in the third one? This, the net force in the vertical direction is zero, but the net force in the horizontal direction is negative 20. So it's going to accelerate left. Okay? So the net force is the vector sum of all forces and make sure that you you know keep your dimensions in mind you're not going to start adding uh, X's with Y's right and we'll talk about two-dimensional with uh, Pythagorean theorem and all that stuff later right now we're going to just stick with one dimension we're going to do horizontal that's section 3.2 in your workbook and then we're going to be doing vertical which is section 3.3 .3 in your workbook okay All right, so let's just get the net forces written down for each situation. First one would be 400 newtons up. Second one will be 200 newtons down. And the last net force would be 20 newtons left. And we'll put a big fat star right here. The net force... big big fat star so that's pretty much the sum not the sum that's yeah the summary that's a summarizing point the net force unbalanced causes acceleration so that's basically the last thing I'm going to talk to you about for a while about the first law okay the net force causes the acceleration and it looks like now we can finally jump into the second law which will bring about the formula that most of you are already familiar with in science 10 do they do F equals MA Okay, so you've seen this before. So, guys, in your notes, use color in your notes. And this last thing definitely needs to be highlighted. Forces don't cause motion. Forces cause acceleration, okay? So, if an object has had some prior force occur to it, it might accelerate. And if there's um, some balance, balancing act going on, the object can still be moving even though there's no more forces uh, being applied. Okay, so let's go to the next slide and we can talk about Newton's second law. Okay, Newton's second law is more than just a formula. It says that the acceleration of an object is dependent on two variables. F net and mass. And we're going to write it like this. And if you haven't seen this before, please just show me by a show of hands. You've never seen that before. Okay. All right. So then I'll explain it. So just get the notes down and then I'll explain it.
Okay, so this first line here with this uh, funny looking symbol, uh, looks like an alpha symbol, yeah. Uh, it means proportional, yeah. So the first one says that acceleration is directly proportional to force. Proportion, proportional. Okay, so that means if I double the acceleration, I double the force. Okay, if I triple the acceleration, I triple the force. Now the second one says that acceleration is indirectly proportional to the mass. So now if I were to, so let's just think about the mass. If I was to double the mass, I would actually have the acceleration. And that makes sense with Newton's first law, with inertia. You remember that? Inertia is this tendency to resist change. So if you are more massive, if you become more massive, your, your ability to accelerate would, would be the opposite, right? If I, get, if I get heavier, my ability to accelerate would get lower. So this is an indirect relationship. So if I, if I double the acceleration, the mass would have to be cut in half, which is weird, right? Mass is usually constant. So think about it this way. If you double the mass, have the acceleration. If you triple the mass, a third of the acceleration. Is that clear? Any questions on that? Okay, so let's get this uh, law formally written. Now, when you're doing your quiz and I ask you to restate Newton's second law, you're not going to have to rewrite this verbatim, okay? So just try your best to explain to me that you no understand the second law, okay? Okay, so on the bottom you'll have your formulas. Um, so Newton's second law is, they refer to the acceleration of the object, so then the equation would be uh, A equals F net divided by M, uh, but usually you never see it like that, so they just rewrite it to F net equals MA. And guys, keep this in mind, you have to use F net, that's the most important thing. And when we get to actually doing some questions, you'll see why.
Okay, so I think we will save. Uh, I got some more notes here for the third law and uh, the kinetic and static friction, but I think we'll save that for Monday. Um, well, it depends on how much time we have, because I think you guys get tired of notes pretty quick. So once you get these notes down, we will switch gears to the workbook. So find this page in your workbook. Uh, this is where the dynamics unit begins. So the workbook offers you some summarizing notes as well uh, about forces and laws. Um, so right now, don't worry too much about the four types. We're just going to keep it simple for now and just talk about the forces that I gave you um, in the notes yesterday. So here's Newton's first law, otherwi otherwise known as the law of inertia. And then we just talked about the second law, which is basically the net forces causing the acceleration. And the formula is there. Okay. Now you can see some vector diagrams here. If the direction and the motion, pardon me, if the direction of the motion and the force are obviously going to stack up here, you'll speed up. If the direction and the force are opposing, it's going to slow down. Okay. So right there you can put in big fat letters, forces cause... What? Good. Acceleration. Acceleration? So I guess I'm really trying to emphasize this, that forces don't cause motion, forces cause acceleration. Now in this third page, they talk about the third law, which is, uh, you guys have probably all heard this like in everyday language, uh, equal and opposite. We'll talk about that more in depth on Monday. Um, so we'll get into that. And then for mass and weight, remember we don't want, in physics class, we don't want to confuse mass with weight, okay? Mass and weight are going to be two separate ideas, whereas in everyday language, people talk about the weight, they think it's your mass, right? So in physics class, weight is the force due to gravity, and it can change based on your location, right? So if you're on the moon, your weight will be different, but your mass will stay Okay, good. This is your formula for Fg. You may or may not have seen it before. Do you see it in uh, Science 10? Mg? You do? Okay, so it's just, what does little g stand for again? Acceleration due to gravity. And then they just switch up the units uh, for this. Instead of being meters per second square, they uh, change up the units for this gravitational field strength. And we'll talk about uh, gravity and field strength later on in the course. So don't worry too much if you don't get what that means. They just switch up the, the units for a newton per kilo. So uh, for these homework problems, I ask that you would get up to number 9. Okay, so this, these first 9 questions are nice because they, they combine um, some of the kinematics. Well, aside from the first 3, the first 3 are just like simple manipulations of F equals MA. Uh, so that's very easy. You may have like one question like that on your unit test. Now 4 to 9, introduce some kinematics so that's uh, you may get a couple of those on your exam so we're going to do nine together right enter okay so let's take a look at nine I want you guys to establish the variables on the left and then decide how we're going to accomplish this question so first thing is Write down the mass. And they're giving us a thrust. So thrust is another word for force. And if you didn't know that, because of maybe English or whatever, you can just look at the units, right? The value is uh, given with a unit of Newton. So you know it's a force. <coughs> And it's the only force that they give you, and so you just have to assume that that's the net force, okay? And then it says determine how long a runway is needed for this to accomplish a takeoff speed of 310 kilometers per hour. So they want a distance, and they want a final velocity of uh, 310 kilometers per hour, so we'll have to switch this to meters per second. And if there's a VF, you probably have to think there's a VI. 
What would the VI be in this case? Y is zero. It's taking off, right? So it would be the object would be in at rest. And then the acceleration changes its state of motion, right? Okay. Why do we have to switch VF uh, to meters per second there, Jacqueline? Because what happens when you um, divide your, your force and mass to get the acceleration? Like these two are going to give you the, the third unknown, right? F, M, and A all go together. If you got two of them, you can always get the third. So F over M is going to give you A. And when this gets calculated, what, what unit will A be in? Yeah, meters per second square. Even though they're going to offer us this newtons per kilo. So this newtons per kilo is going to be equivalent to meters per second square. So what is the, uh, because what is the newton? Let's jot down that. 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 5. What's the unit for newton? Kilogram per meter per second square. And then we're going to be dividing that by the mass, which is 2.8 times 10 to the 5 kilogram. And this will solve for A. Watch the units disappear. And then pump this into the calculator. And I know s even at this point, a month in, I saw some students, well, student. I mean, at least she was doing her homework, so I was happy about that. But she was putting it in the calculator really weird. So for this uh, scientific notation, what are we using? The E button. So what was the number? 7.7. .7. Is that right? Times 10 to the 5 divided by 2.8 times 10 to the 5. Okay, so whenever you see that, you're going to put that E. So 2.75 is our acceleration. Was it 2.75? Yes. Okay. And it's a positive 2.75, so that means that we're speeding up. Obviously, it's a plane taking off. Now they want distance. Notice how they didn't tell us any time. So if there's no times involved, what's the only formula we can jump into? VF squared, VI squared, and 2AD. We know that VI squared is zero. This whole term is gone. VF is 310 divided by... 3.6, 86.1, is this repeating? Yeah. Okay, 86.1 repeating, all squared, equals 2 times 2.75 times D. Divide those out. I would just times them first, of course. And then you have less issues in the calculator. So times 2 and 2.75, what do you get? What is it? 5.5. Put 5.5 over here. You'll have less issues in the calculator if you pump in the numbers like this. Okay? And what do you get? What, what's the exact calculator business? 1, 1, 1 3, 4, 7.85. And the units for distance are 0.86 meters. Look at the answer. What are they offering? 1.3 kilometers. So take a look at what they offered for significant digits. We have two sig digs and two sig digs and three sig digs. So we have to use two. Okay, so how do you explain, or not explain, how do you express this answer with two sig digs? You look at this digit, it doesn't round it up, so we're going to go 1.3 times 10 to the, how many decimal moves? Three. three. One, two, three. And this is meters. Why do they use kilometers? Well, it's the same thing, right? So look at your formula sheet. Everybody take out your formula sheet. Or if you don't have a formula sheet, flip to the back of the inside cover of your workbook. 
On the inside cover of your workbook, you should look at Appendix C in your data sheet. The data sheet has all your metric prefixes, okay? So take a look at kilo. What's kilo? 10 to the 3. Look at my answer. Do you see 10 to the 3? So obviously it's kilo, right? Absolutely. Do you want to do one more? One more and then I'll let you work on the rest of the homework. And we'll get this first section done. <coughs> Sound fair? Okay, let's do number eight. The rest of the section. But I'll talk about it in a second. Okay, number eight. This person, whoever that is, someone read that for me. What a kind of a name is this? Pack a bell? Sounds like Taco Bell. You guys want some Taco Bell this weekend? <laughs> do now. Then you could calculate the thrust of your bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Okay, let's take a look at this question eight. Taco Bell fires a small cannon, resulting in a one kilogram cannonball. So let's just jot that down. One kilogram. Obtaining a speed of 12 meters per second to the north. It said it was starting at rest. So we have VI 0 and VF 12 meter per second. And they have a distance of 50 centimeters. Okay, sometimes I get really pissed off at you guys when you ask me how to do metric conversions because that's like an elementary school thing. But I'm going to try to really just solve that problem for you right now. You look at what they offered you, 50 centimeters. Go into your Appendix C. Look for the metric prefix centi. What do you see? What do you see next to centi? 10 to the power negative 2. Here's how you can do every single metric conversion you ever want to ever do ever in your life and you never have to worry about it, okay? 50 times 10 to the minus 2. Because it said centi. Enter. Done. Okay? Can we give up on these metric issues? What if they said 50 megameters? What would you do? Look at your appendix there, Joel. What would you times this 10 to the power of? What's mega? 10 to the 6. Okay, I'm done. I don't have to worry about it. Okay? Can everybody agree that metric is okay? Metric is good. <laughs> All right. So we're going to use 50 times 10 to the negative 2. And we are into 0 0.5 meters. Okay. Then it says determine the average force applied on the cannonball. Um, this average force... Uh, we haven't seen any notes on this average, and this just has to do with um, the fact that the speeds are changing. Remember we, had in, remember we had average speed and instantaneous speed? So it's just along those lines. So I would not stress out about that average at all. So speed's changing. So it's sort of this instantaneous versus uh, average. So please don't worry about what average force means. You just calculate the force, okay? So what would we need to calculate the force? We have the mass. What would we need? There's only three of them, F, M, and A. So if you want the force, you have the M, you need the, you need the acceleration. So in question 8, it's a little bit different than in question 9. In question 9, we solved for the acceleration and then did some kinematics. Now we're going to do some kinematics, get the A, and then do the force. Okay? So you get both sort of versions thrown at you. Okay, so let's take a look at what, what's offered. Are we given any times? No, so we probably have to go with the VF square, okay? So VF square equals VI square plus a 2AD. We know that VI is 0, very similar. VF is 12 squared, so that would be, can I just go to 144 with, for that? 
144 equals 2 times, what's D? 0. 0.5 times A. What's 2 times 0. 0.5? 1, right? That's just 1. So A is 144. That was, that was easy for some reason. So if our acceleration is our acceleration is 144 meters per second square, we can use our mass. So F equals, this is also quite easy, 144, whoops, almost pointless, not really, never, I don't do anything that's pointless, just kidding. So it's 144 Newton. Now, what haven't I put on there that's in the key? Yes, vectors have direction. So the fact that it says that it's speeding up north, the force would be in the same direction as the motion if you're speeding up. So we can put in north here. Okay, so finish off 1 to 9. I've done 2 for you. I've talked about metric. I've talked about... Uh, Basically, everything you need to know, I've given you patterns. Put all the variables on the left. Make sure your units line up. Okay? You guys got this. Oh, by the way, the rest of the homework. Ignore 10. Make sure you do 11, and the appendix will help you. You can see the difference between the, uh, the lines here. Think acceleration. Okay? Which acceleration is greater? Right? Look at slopes. Okay, next. You will not have to worry about 12, 13, and 14 right now because we haven't talked. We won't worry about 14. So 12 and 13, uh, you could do 12, but don't worry about 13 yet because we haven't talked about... Yeah, don't worry about 12 and 13. But I want you to finish off 15 and 16 because it's going to be talking about this calculation here. Fg equals mg, okay? Where it's going to be mass times the force due to, or the acceleration due to gravity, but it's, they change up the units on you, so make sure you are aware of that for that gravitational field strength. So it's a Newton per kilo here. Okay, and then the kilos will cancel and you'll be left in Newtons. So make sure you do 15 and 16. And then you can look into 3.2. We're not going to be talking about friction till Monday. And you can work on all these free body diagrams for the weekend. Okay? So there's like two questions and the stuff you should already have done in the first section on top of all these free body diagrams up to four. Okay? And if you wanted to try five to nine as a challenge without me doing anything, that's up to you. But at least one to four by Monday. Do you guys all agree? And you're gonna, everyone's going to take home their book this weekend.